but they're horrible in the public arena. Correct. So correct. then your valuations will suffer. Yes. And then if you don't do that, you don't do justice by your shareholders. Correct. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the VUCA Insight Podcast, where we bring you insights in the world of investing, entrepreneurship, and growth mindset. Today, um, if you're a listener of BFM, I'm pretty sure you will recognize his signature voice. (laughs) Uh, You will also recognize his ability to grill people very, very well until they're well done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the person I'm talking about is none other than Mr. Ku Su Chuang himself. Ku, thank you for coming to the show. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, it's indeed indeed a pleasure. I think uh, we physically met also for the first time, and probably we just run straight to the back. How was a 15 year old Ku Su Chuang like, actually? 15 year old Ku Su Chuang was a damn blur song. <laughs> <laughs> How was, how was growing up in Penang, right? Um, actually, 15 years old, I was really abroad. Um, I, was sent, ah. I was sent abroad by my parents when I was very young. I see. I went to boarding school when I was 13. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Did you blame it's... your parents back then for like, in a way, abandoning you? Well, you, well, you don't understand, right? You just, yeah. you just basically told what your parents, told, told, told to do what your parents told you to do. Yeah. And um, I think at, in that era in Penang in those days, you know, going overseas for school was quite common. I see. I mean, at least within, you know, the, the people that my parents used to be around. Mm. Um, so yeah, so I was abroad when I was 13, 14, boarding school from three, England, very wow. cold, total mm. cultural change. I was like, <laughs> I was blown away. So I was shocked, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you're just trying to get a hold of, you know, trying to understand what's going on. Mm. It's a complete change. The weather is different. The culture is different. Okay. The people are different. What they understand and what you know about the world and what other people know about the world is different. Okay. Like, for example, when you go to the UK, you know, back in the day, you think uh-huh. people in, in the UK, they are so much more, you think they're so much more uh, worldly or urbane or intelligent or, you know, superior to us Asians. Uh-huh. Actually, I discovered quite the opposite. Oh, really? Um, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I discovered that Malaysians, as, as a people, were much more worldly wow. and, and much more uh, attuned to the ways of the world than the British. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good and insight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this was um, even those within your age group and even sometimes even more senior than you in the age group. In a yeah, way. generally because, you know, they were very, um, in a way, back, back in the day, the UK was quite, um, you know, uh, monoculturalist. Ah. And, you know, um, you know they, they're just, you know, basically just... 50 years, you know, out of the British Empire, very it's superior, very arrogant. You know, they believe that people look to them rather than they look to the people. Yeah. So, so, so then, you know, a question that was asked when I was in England was like, uh, where's Malaysia? <laughs> they, they literally, then, then I said, oh, Malaysia is somewhere in Asia. It's, it's just near Singapore. Then, mm. then when they, look, they heard Singapore, ah. right? And then they asked me, do you have electricity there? <laughs> right? Do you have oh, water, you know? And I was like, you are so blur, man. Yeah. We know about you, but you don't know about, about us. us. That's no good. Yes. That is no good. Yes. You, you, yeah. And, yeah. and you were once the world superpower. You know. It's an information deficit, right? And Correct. the fact that you don't, not only do you not know, you don't choose to learn to know about Correct. the rest of the world. Correct. It's Correct. bad. It's, yeah. it's parochialism, right? Ir- ignorance by choice, in a way. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's not your fault if you're born stupid, but Correct. it is your fault if you don't get <laughs> less <laughs> stupid. Yeah. You know, not to say I've got a, a yeah. lot of British people are my friends, but yeah. that was the reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the, by you mentioning this, right, um, my prior to me getting married and my honeymoon, I've traveled to England before. Um, but here was this, was, this was a funny story because of what, what you just said triggered me. I landed with my wife for my honeymoon 20, 2009, I think, 2008. The customs officer actually mentioned this to me. Oh, you speak very good English. Exactly. That's the other thing I was told. Yeah, told yeah. Well. And I was yeah. like, I nearly wanted to reply, so do you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, I mean, <laughs> besides that um, uh, insight that you got, in terms of um, what were the good habits do you think that you picked up because you were sent so early into boarding school. Were there certain systems? Were there certain behaviors, certain culture? Or was it there was not much insights that you felt you haven't already learned back in your Malaysian days? Um, being abroad at a very early age, the experiential um, immersion is, 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 is so much more material mm. because you're young, right? Okay, and when okay. you're young, at that age, in your pre-teens, early teens, right? your experience is so much more uh, amazing okay. rather than when you go and visit the UK at, th- say, 30, I right? I see. So the, the thing is, um, you know, 
you learn so many things. So independence is one thing, right? Mm, mm, mm. Experiencing racism was another thing, ah. right? Um, experiencing other cultures was another thing. You, you know, traveling by train through through a foreign land to get to another part of the country is a different thing. So you learn to be autonomous. You learn autonomy at a I very see. very early age. I see. Yeah. And and you take accountability much more seriously. Anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And boarding school life was very different. You know, a lot of ragging in those days. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I was yeah. the only Asian kid, right? There was only one other. There was only one other Malaysian kind of like person in my boarding house. Okay. And he was in the sixth form. And he had ah, really been there like donkey's years. I see. So he was like a British Malaysian. I see. I was like a Malaysian Malaysian. Malaysian. You know? Yeah. So really like katak bawah tempurung and then, and then you, correct, wow, correct, wow, correct, man. Correct, they correct. really picked on you, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I kenal lah. I kenal. <laughs> I kenal. So, you know, when you're in Penang, right? Or yeah. you're in Malaysia, right? We yeah. don't understand what racism is. Yes, I mean, yes. now, you know, as you get older, you do. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean, right? Yes, yes. Um, but in, your, in those early days, you know, our friends are Chinese, Indian, Malay, Indian. whatever, right? Yes. Jewish kids in my school in Penang, or local school, right? You go there, you're like, you, you're totally alien to the idea of Correct. racism. Insulated. <laughs> yeah. And then they just, you know, it's, it's, it's bad. It's yeah. bad. It's yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic insights, right? Yeah. So, how did a law graduate from Leicester end up in audit? The question, the, the question is, how did someone study law in the first place? Yeah, right? yeah. And the reason why someone studies law in the first place is because one was a blur of tongue in the first place. Okay. So, so not every, but no, I would say, um, the minority of people understand what they like and what they study, and they become they do what they like to do. Yeah, right? That's right. I would say the vast majority of kids, especially kids who are not well parented or well uh, learned or exposed, exposed will understand what they really like and study what they really want. Right? Yeah. So I was one of those kids who were none of the above. I see. So I was just advised at a very superficial level by my father that there's only really five things you can study. Okay. It's either ed medicine, accounting, law, engineering, or, or architecture. Okay. The five so-called professions in those okay. days. Uh, I was shit at maths. <laughs> I was horrible in the sciences. Okay. Can't draw. Okay. Uh, can kind of like write lah. Uh, so then do law law. Some more father law ma. So father uh, lawyer Ah, no wonder. So journalism was out of the question, even though writing, right? In a way. No la, journalism was it even didn't even enter the equation because what <laughs> what why will Xia like your journalist yeah. for me? So I thought Xia Po Zhua. I just I just Tanui. Yeah, yeah. Right? Cannot earn money. Yeah. yeah. So, so so yeah, studied law. Um, never never really liked law because it's just so uh, dry. You know? I see. I see. Failed the bar exams twice. So you come out and you find a job lah, right? And actually, I've got a big, you know, um, I've got big opinions on education and, and what we study now and children and how we parent, right? Yes. There's a big discussion there. Yeah. I'm not sure you want to go into that. No, no, no. I, I, I want to because yeah. I, could, I, I think part of the audience as well, uh, I, I describe about my uh, family mm. a lot mm. um, because I feel that, you know, prior even to starting this podcast, we talked about our children's education, how is taxpayers' money well spent mm. and, you know, should we even pay for it? Yeah, but coming from you, I think by standards of the bar, not not going through what societal norms is, right? You take a different view. Is, is that absolutely, what absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you just study something which you, which will get you a degree and yeah. which will give you a tertiary education yeah. and get a piece of paper, right? Yeah. Then you realize, right, um, this piece of paper, unless, you, my conclusion now is that unless you get into the big Ivy League universities, mm. Oxford, Cambridge, Yale, MIT, Stanford, Harvard, whatever, mm. don't bother, right? Just stay in Malaysia and study. because. Correct. Because if you study law and you get it from, say, Durham University in the yeah, UK, yeah. or you study law in UITM, yeah. you come back to Malaysia, you're going to get the same salary. Exactly. So what's the differentiator? <laughs> yeah. the differentiator is international travel, mm. learning to live by yourself, f discovering autonomy, discovering accountability, which bloody hell, you can learn on your own. Or you can go traveling and I, and you, you do what the, the European kids do, Correct. which is going to gap you, yeah. right? Right? You took the words out of my mouth, get you. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so then, basically what we're doing now as parents, if we send yeah. them to a local normal universe, normal in the yeah. UK or yeah. America, yeah. you're just paying for a very expensive uh, Hol foreign ho holiday. holiday. Yeah. <laughs> and then, they, they might go there and pick up a lot of bad habits. Correct, right? correct. Drinking, la, smoking. La, gambling. I've gambling, seen, I've seen my, my first eyes. Yeah. Um, one of my... Casinos there are legal. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. And then the only time the kids will call is when they need money. Correct. Right. So Which all is that kind of, la, yeah, yeah. I I am hundred plus one percent with you, Chuang, on this because I, I never had the privilege of going overseas. Mm. Um my parents could never afford them. Right. But And look at you now. Yeah. Right? I, I mean I struggle through 
the working world mm. and like my curiosity appetite has never been stronger. Yeah. But how do you inculcate that in your kids? It's not mm. through a normal university whatsoever. It must mm. come within some kind of good parenting, mm. internal motivation, mm. holding them accountable for decisions. Mm. I think that's what we as parents will have to strive to do. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not easy. I mean, I... Nobody gives you a manual on parenting, right, Chuang? <laughs> I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. what we think about parenting is what we observe our parents mm-hmm. do to us. Mm-hmm. And then we realize they may not stand the test of time. Yeah. I don't know if you agree with me on that. No, parenting is a very individual scenario, right? Correct, what correct. works for me will not work for you because correct. very specific circumstances, correct, right? Correct, exactly. Um, so it goes back to the whole nature and nurture argument, right? Yeah, and yeah. I don't know what is the answer there. Yeah. Can, how, do you, how do you have a person who is naturally inquisitive pursues a, a lifelong of learning, you know, always wants to strive to be best and doing what's best for him or herself and Correct. fulfilling their true potential. That's right. Is that nature or nurture? I don't know. Yeah. Right? But I, so, so this is how I see it, right? Yeah. If I present my children with a set of circumstances through which they say, okay, this is how, this is, okay, because, because if you look at life, right, and, and humans as a living organism, we are very attuned to hierarchies, right? That's right. We know where we are on the hierarchy. We can feel pecking it. Pecking order. Your pecking order. <laughs> yeah. It is so ingrained in our psyche that we know exactly where we stand in the hierarchy of yeah. things, right? Yes, yeah. And if I present my kids with a, with a set of circumstances which puts them somewhere near the top percentile of hierarchy, yeah. then they will want to naturally either aspire to stay there mm, or to go higher. Yes. Because you don't want to relegate yourself down there, man, because if I can eat this way, travel that way, live in this way, travel in the, and sit in this kind of car, yeah. uh, well, I want to maintain that status quo or, 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 or get promoted to the upper divisions, correct, right? Correct, right? correct. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So I'm saying, this is your life now. It's bloody good, right? right yeah. But you should aim higher. Correct. Don't you think you should have a nicer car, a nicer house? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a nicer watch or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and pursue the high calling. So then you go back to the, you know, um, 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 what do you call it? Maslow's law of hierarchy. Yeah, hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah. So once you've got the material stuff and then you seek for higher things, correct, and correct. all that kind of thing. Right? Yes. So if you present these, these circumstances, then the kid will naturally want to do for him, do, do, do good better. by himself. Yeah. La. yeah. Here's the struggle, Chuang. I mean, just trying, trying to be a, a little bit of a devil's advocate, right? Yeah. Now you see, some parents, either by, by choice or unconsciously, they kind of portray that wealth is somewhat bad mm. right I'm pretty sure you've come across some kind of be- people in that school of thought right mm. Mm. and they believe that you know uh, by wanting more in life mm. it's like too materialistic mm. uh, it's too capitalist it's kind of thinking uh, what, what do you say to that kind of thought process because I'm pretty sure you meet some people that say, no, 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 we, we should be okay, not too rich or mm. not too mm. poor, mm. but, you know, okay. So w- what's your thought process to that or opinion to that, actually? I, I'm actually quite sympathetic to that ideal. Okay. No, 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 <laughs> no because yeah, I, I, I think that too much wealth is, is damaging. Yes. Of course, too little wealth is very damaging, right? Yeah, yes. But once you've satisfied your basic needs yeah. and then you've got a little bit more than that, that, that actually gets you to your 80-90% of happiness already, mm, right? Correct. Beyond that, why? Why, right? why yeah. What, what are you going to do with half a billion ringgit? Yeah. What, You're not going to eat wagyu every day, no. right? <laughs> and, and, and to be honest, at my level now, yeah. I can go to 90% of uh, the places that the millionaires go to anyway, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I may not go there three times a week, yeah. maybe they do, but yeah. actually how much at Marble 5 can you eat, right? Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean, yeah. right? Um, How many Michelin stars can you go to or want to go to every week, right? right? Yeah. After you've drank and finished the first two bottles of Chateau Neuf de Perp, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the rest is all is a bit carpet on the tongue. Yeah, right exactly. Right? <laughs> sure? exactly. So, so the, the, the idea is to start with a really good bottle of wine yeah. and then get cheaper as you go down yeah, the line. Cause, it numbs right? the taste already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so right? I mean... You want to see the Aurora Borealis? I can go there. Yeah. Right? And so can they. Yes. But what? what where, where else are you going to go? Else? Into yeah. space? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not for everyone. Uh. I mean, not for everyone, right? I think because of uh, the transcendence or the ubiquitousness of social media today, mm. I think it creates this false perception of a, a want or whatever. And mm. I think that me perhaps I'm, I'm in my guess exacerbated oh I need to have this kind of lifestyle yeah. oh, I need, but yeah. once you cut through all the fluff uh, actually yeah. most of it don't it's need. bullshit it's yeah, bullshit yeah. Yeah, and, it's, and, and what is really galling about social media is yeah. that now the best minds in the world are being paid because they can pay the most money correct. to go to social media networks 
and and basically find out find out new algorithms to make you addicted. It Correct. Is. And it plays into the whole uh, law of economics, which is not everyone can be satisfied. That's right. And you keep on wanting to aspire, right? Correct. correct. But that's Salah because... <laughs> Consciously, okay. right? Yeah. So if you reject the idea of success, right? Mm. what is success to you? Mm. What is success to most people in Malaysia? It's right? very individualistic, actually. It's very materialistic. Yes, yes. Right? It's how much money you have. Yes. It's the size of your house. Correct. It's the... It's the size of the weight of your wife's Watch. diamond ring, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or the color of it. <laughs> huh, right? Yeah. But actually, to me, that's not, that's not that's only part of success. That's right. Success is healthy relationships. Correct. Success is a healthy body. Yeah. Success is a healthy mind. Correct. Right? Correct. So so if you have like a weightage, right? Like, you know, fund managers have weightage, right? Yes. What is material success or career success? That could only be like a fifth of the portfolio. That's right. Because you're... To your twenty percent, a fifth could be your family. Correct. A fifth could be your health. A yes. fifth could be your spirituality. Correct. A fifth could be your, you know, your your friends and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Relationships. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So then, if you say, okay, a fifth is only materialistic in career, well, then most people who want to chase success will dedicate a hundred percent of the portfolio to chasing what essentially should only be a fifth. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, like Buffett is a good clear yeah. example. Yeah. If anyone read the Snowball, which is his, in a way his yeah. official yeah. biography, yeah. right? His family life was in tatters. Yeah. Why? He was very good at his craft, mm. but you know his first wife left him. Yeah, his first yeah. wife left him. He was he's wired to be an investor, right? Yeah. I mean, like Winston Churchill, I, I love Winston Churchill as well, oh. right, right? Uh yes, he had a loving family, but I would argue that, you know, if it was anyone else besides Winston Churchill during World War II, mm. I, I we may have we may be speaking German today. Yeah. <laughs> that's the yeah. joke that yeah. we yeah. use. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So great insights on that. Okay, I'm gonna move on into from audit and uh, you didn't you didn't stay very long, I guess. No, I, uh, no. it must have killed you, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> The auditors are going to hate me for saying this, but there's something life sapping and something soul sapping about being stuck between two, four grey walls yeah. and, and computer screens and people working 16 hours a day. There's yeah. something which, which you know, to a kind of like a creative person doesn't doesn't kind of add up. Right? It's yeah. like the Matrix in you and it's... Suck and yeah, it's yeah. 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 <laughs> so you pivoted from there into journalism in the age, uh, during the height of the, you know, kind of the height of the Asian financial crisis. Yeah. What was it like? Was it... An exciting time because markets was in turmoil. What what do you gain out of that uh, duration being being a journalist at the age? It was the best time of my life. It was oh, the really? best job I've ever had. Yeah, wow, yeah. wow, wow. This is like so the age started in nineteen ninety-three. Mm. I started in nineteen ninety-seven at the age. Right? Yeah. So they're still very new. Okay. Small shop lot, Damasara mm. Jaya, just behind Atria. Mm. Right, right. Mm. Gamuda was just behind. And okay. we used to go for the chap fun there, the mixed rice. Okay. And Dato Lin and I we would normally have lunch. Oh Dato Lin, you the Gamuda. Yeah, yeah, the Gamuda guy, right? Yeah. So it's like a little Pokey little office there, Ketat and, and Azam. And uh. Azam was playing his Beatles records in the little room. <laughs> wow. Ketat was like, you know, still young, you know. Karamjit Singh was opposite me. It was fantastic, wow. fantastic, wow. fantastic. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I loved it so much because it was a very free atmosphere. I see. You just were given carte blanche to just conduct your week as it was. Wow. You just give me a story. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So Ketat would just say, go away. I don't want to see you for five days. You just file something by Friday afternoon. Wow. So fantastic. freehand, white piece of paper. Fantastic. Yeah. I was going for this press conference, going for that interview. Wow. You know, you know, just having full autonomy over my story. So it was wow. fantastic. Wow. What was the story you kind of like, wow, oh, shit, this is my worst piece. And what do you think was the highlight? Um, I guess in those I know, days, I was corporate as well as technology. So net value, I was, I was the pioneer reporter there, mm-hmm. reporting to Tan Boon Ken, the MD, ah. BK, right? Ah, BK. So I was the only reporter in net value. So those days, was multimedia super corridor. Mm. Mate was pushing it, mm. international advisory panel, you I know, see. people like that. Ah. So very, very new, very, very like fantastic. So the internet was just coming up. Yep. Netscape was the default browser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Andreessen. That's yeah. right, Mark Andreessen, yeah. who now runs Andreessen Horowitz, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Fantastic firm, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Then I was covering corporate at the same time. So I see. big, big PLCs. You know, Proton was very big in those days. You know, um, uh, Guthrie's was big in those days. You know, those kind of companies. Yeah. So yeah. very interesting, lah. Very, 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 very interesting. Very fascinating. Actually, you know, I was um, I was a Form Five student, ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, and um, one book. And I know this is, shouldn't be one of the best reference, but actually Nazir Razak's book actually documented quite a bit of um, the DRB high comms and all that, mm. right? And I, I want to seek your thought because I, I say that, hey guys, if you're in the capital markets today, you should really study the height of the Malaysian economy during the 90s, the go-go years, right? Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, 
where is UAM Magenta prior to this? It was the DRB High Coms, yeah. that, those conglomerates, yeah. you know, right? And it was the former USSR. Yeah, exactly. They had different countries, right? Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, what do you think that actually riled you up looking at back with uh, hindsight, with like uh, better understanding of corporate governance? What do you think could have been better done? Okay, so the minority shareholders were never protected in those days until really essentially the mid-2010s, mm. right? There was zero minority shareholder protection. It was just like the manipulators were like, like it's like a Having zoo, ha- zoo Nagara. They were <laughs> yeah, running yeah. wild everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to name names, yes, but the yes. syndicates were controlling the market. Remember 1993? Yeah. Malaysia was like, well, the burst, the KLCI was 6.5% of the MSCI Asia Pacific, right? Correct, correct. Weightage, you know, today yes. I don't know what we are. Maybe yeah. 1, 0.8%, I yeah. don't know, right? what, Less than one, la, definitely. Right, la. the KLCI was the go-to market in yeah. those days. Asian Tigers, Bull Run. Yeah, 1993, Bull Run, fantastic. Yeah. We were part of a group of com- people trying to sell a stockbroking firm for 150 million <laughs> in those days. <laughs> yeah, can you yeah, imagine, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Malaysia was big, but it wasn't always the best regulator. La, I understand, know. I understand. Um, yeah, so so basically, if you, if you are a retail investor in those days, you could either make a shit ton of money or you could lose a shit ton of money. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, minority. What do you think that uh, were good practices back then that you don't see today? In terms of the market? Mm, in terms of the market. Uh, in terms of maybe even journalism. What do you think were good practices? You already mentioned one, freehand, carte blanche. Mm. Anything else that you wish you could, you know, re- repeat those good uh, habits or culture? today that you don't see it anymore? Well, today there's a big capture in the media industry, right? Mm. Uh, capture in the sense that on one side, they're assailed by the big t- internet companies. Mm. So they're losing the media landscape and the advertising pie, mm. the Facebooks mm. of this world. Yes. Then the other side of the squeeze by inf- advertisers because it's a dying medium. Mm. Then of course, is, the other side is, is the... Um, is the lack of um, demarcation, Chinese ah. walls between marketing and, and editorial. Okay. In those days, you could really like put out a very, very market-moving story. Ah. So people will buy the edge to get the marketing trading edge. That's why they was called the edge, right? Ah. Yeah, so on a Saturday morning, you go to the news station, you, you buy your copy, you get a few investing ideas, ma, right? Yes, yes, yes. In the yes. first five pages, right? Correct, correct. And then on Monday, you put your trade in and, and you know, usually, you, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that was, but today, how many breaking news stories do you see? Too many. Very Either too many or not, not many with insights. Or captured, right? Oh, Maybe captured. because they are, right, they are captured by the... The, the Twitters and all. No, the uh, um, the, the, the lobbies are the parties. Ah, the or, lobbies. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so so it's not. I'm not sure whether it's a fundamentally good, you know, trading story or yeah, it's really like cornered and then. I, I, do you know what I mean, right? So, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think with that said, right, see whether my statement is uh, in alignment with what what you just said. I think to the investor today, uh, it takes more skill to discern. Mm. Uh, what's a legitimate or a better trade rather than just a lot of fluff because yeah. you know in the past correct me if I'm wrong and I'm, I'm not a journalist the editorial standards were I would say a little bit more higher more fact check today it's like hey deadlines you know you just gotta like push it out is, is that is that something of a norm today in a way let me be very clear yeah the Malaysian financial media was nascent in the early 90s it's still nascent today. Okay. <laughs> okay. Read in between the line, guys. You understand what I mean. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, because I used to work in London for yeah. Reuters, yeah. right? And, and in London, the, the media industry there is so mature, right? I mean, for example, I was covering, I was covering small caps. Yeah. <clears throat> and in, in London, you know, at that time, I was, I was in my late 30s, mid 30s, right? And I thought I was quite seasoned. Mm. Then I meet David Blackwell from oh, the Financial oh, yes, Times. Yes. And he's been covering small caps since the late 70s. So he's like in the 60s and he's been seeing, he's seen the game through four or five financial crises. Correct. And that's just in the media world, right? Um, today, the problem is too much information. Yeah. Right? So how do you filter? Yes. Right? And people are getting, they've, they've, people have always been lazy. Correct. Investors have always been lazy. Correct. They just take the tip, they just read the story. Yeah. Then they don't even know what business the company's doing. Yeah. I'll oh, just go and buy, right? <laughs> Headline. Boom, <laughs> action. You've got nobody to blame by yourself. Yes, You've yes. got to do the research. Yes, right? yes, yes. Today, yes. so many YouTube, Twitter, yeah, you know, yes. um, uh, there's no the excuse bloggers. for no resources, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, who do you listen to? Yeah, yeah. And so many more choices today. Right? Correct, correct. You can even buy USD bills if you want. Yeah. It's how crazy it is. Yes. You can even invest in, like, 
you know, on, on my eToro account. Yeah. Last week, I just bought natural gas. Wow. <laughs> futures, uh, natural gas yeah, futures. Yeah, futures, right? <laughs> of course, I lost my money because <laughs> I, I was just speculating. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But nowadays, on, on anything, all these yeah, robots, yeah. you can buy anything under anything, the sun. Yeah. So what do you buy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Today, the challenge is, how do you filter the information? Yeah. So the discerning, the skill. It's interesting you mentioned about the Financial Times because... You know, I, I think the age is still undergoing uh, trial. I, I haven't, I haven't followed. You know about the penny stock scandal and then yeah. the company sued them yeah. back. I, I haven't followed, but I was watching this documentary about how Financial Times uncovered Wirecard, and they yeah. were remember. I don't know if you managed to watch that documentary. They had to had an air gap laptop. They had to work in an isolated because they were afraid of wire taps and all that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But they make sure that the story was like ironclad, you yeah. know, to make sure that lawyers went through, vetted the source, whatever, right? Why is it difficult, do you think, uh, that Malaysia or even Asian countries cover that level of journalism? Is it constraint of resources, um, ability of editors to take a little bit more risk? Why, why do you think so? I mean, this is purely, you know, just personal opinion, obviously. There are two different matters, right? Yeah. Um, so people like the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, you know, Bloomberg. I used to work at Bloomberg, right, and in Reuters. So the level of um, the propensity for journalists to make errors is very, very minimized. I see. Okay. So when I was in Bloomberg, the co- the company used to make a big deal out of the fact that on a daily basis, Bloomberg would run about five to six thousand stories a day, but active live lawsuits are huh, no more than two. Wow. No more than two. Okay. Wow. And and if I had a big story, which you know. Transcended borders and which is definitely market moving, yeah. but it, it had a level of um, possible tran- uh, trespass. It would have to be lawyered and it would go through three layers of edit. Wow. And then New York would have a last look at it and they would call me in the middle of the night to ask me to reveal my sources. And if I couldn't, if we couldn't pass the litmus test for number one okay. rule in journalism was okay. accuracy, okay. it would be spiked. Wow. Okay? Uh, so that's the, that's the foreign media. So if you see basic stories on the Wall Street Journal or Bloomberg, you can pretty much discern that it's right, really, lah. Yeah, yeah. And they will get it. They will get alternate sources, multiple sources from different part of the of the chain. Yeah. To piece together a pretty accurate story, lah. Yeah. So the level of error there is is pretty low. Okay. That's why Wall Street Journal was never sued for all the one in yes, coverage. Correct. Because it's pretty A-type. much there. A-type. 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 Accurate, yeah. right? Yeah. Lawyer until cannot lawyer anymore. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Um, Malaysia, it's a bit different because when they got in trouble with the um authorities for their penny stock coverage, right? What the hell, man? Yeah. This is what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Right? Whose side are you on? So then, but that's what I mean by capture, lah, yes, right? The capture yes. is basically the, the wealthier lobby who have interests, right? Shutting down the watchdog yes. for, you know, yeah. for revealing their transgressions. Lah. Yes, yes, yes. And the Malaysian government should know better. But yeah. So, so that's what I mean. So for me, capture, you know, right? I mean, as a, an educator of uh, retail markets, right? I, I feel saddened, to be honest, mm. you know, because I felt that these guys, uh, they have nothing, in a way, right, monetary-wise, nothing to gain. Yeah. You know how badly journalists are paid in Malaysia? Yeah. I, I can only imagine. That's why, that's why, you know, you were asking me prior to the podcast, what's interesting? Yeah. I said, yeah, only when I got into investing and I understood <laughs> accuracy, corporate governance, yeah. it's actually people like you guys that actually... Tell the stories. Mm. Tell the accurate stories. Mm. And it's, it's a lot of courage, you know, you know mm. to, 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 to do all this. Uh. So mm. that's why I'm trying to understand or decipher what's stopping them. How can we collectively, obviously we won't be able to find the answers direct now, but how do we collectively help encourage a higher level of journalism? I think that's, the, the, that's, the, that's what I'm trying to tease out of you uh, from your experiences. Well, the thing is, Malaysia is a very, it, we've been stuck at a level for a long, long time, mm. right? And it's not just media, it's, it's a lot of other industries, mm. other verticals, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's uh, semiconductors, or whether it's manufacturing, or whether it's, you know, for the longest time, Tan Sri Francis Yu of YTL yes, was saying, yes. why is it that a five-star hotel room in Mandarin Oriental is only 100 US dollars for a long time, right? Correct. It's because we're stuck there. We cannot mm. go higher, right? Mm. So when you cannot go higher, you can't have the, the maturation of the industry, right? So Malaysia is, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been operating at a level of mediocr- mediocrity for yeah. a long, long time. Yeah. 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 It's because... The top management is mediocre, so all the way down mediocre. Why not? Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You've covered MNC, tech, semicon, internet uh, back then. And then when you were at Reuters, you were covering FTSE, small cap, renewable energy. 
by covering such a variety or wide uh, industries, right? Um, does it give you an itch? You feel, does it give you an itch in your own personal investing, in your own personal portfolio? Okay, this is the thing. People <laughs> used to say to me, hey, you are you at the center of the yeah, commission. Exactly. You've got the edge, right? You've yeah. got all the rumors, yeah, yeah. all the... Actually, no. <laughs> okay. No. Okay? <laughs> First of all, when the company owners tell you these things, uh-huh. they're already on the way out already. Yeah. Right? Because the game is over, right? Yeah. Buy on rumors, sell on fact, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing. Okay. Secondly, journalists are trained to be cynical, ma. Ah. Right? You tell me something, I must go and fact check, ma. Right? Yes, yes, yeah. Double check, double check, double check, double check. So, they're, they're very cynical by nature. Yeah. So, it's like, if you're cynical in nature, then you suffer from analysis paralysis, ah. right? So, Honestly, right? I sh- if I had bought Amazon in 2003, yeah. if I had bought Microsoft in 1998, <laughs> if I had bought Netflix in 2010, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because you're so, you're like, you're, you're so warded off because of all the, all the news flow about, oh, it's so risky, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah, you got yeah. this thing, and then, yeah, yeah. then you don't do anything, right? Yeah, yeah. It's only like recently that I've just been coming back to it in a big way. I used to be like a real estate guy, oh. right? And I'm saying, I used to stay away from equities, in a, you know. And even though you covered equities, I speculated right? equities, right? Yeah, yeah. But I didn't like look at equities as a long term thing. Yeah. I used to say, okay, real estate, right? Real estate, you know, right? Penang lang ma. Ah, conservative, yeah, right? Yeah, conservative, right? At least it's safer, right? Yeah, yeah. You can touch, touch it, it you can feel, right? tangible. <laughs> but then I realized, no, not really, not really. And uh, so you make them cynical, right? Mm. And you're not at the center of the information. If you really were, you know, you wouldn't be a journalist. You would be. <laughs> These are the the exit uh, gates. I see for for the for the real people for the real people yeah. who are in a way running the show, yeah. la, right? And they're really on the way out, really. Yeah, yeah, and I think because of your sharing of this cynicism and all that, right? What made you 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 mentioned that you are now coming back in a bit way? What do you think were the pivotal factors or criteria that changed your mind? Was it because of the results? Now with the benefit of hindsight, you saw the results of what happened, or was it? Uh, someone, an influential person. What were the pivoting factors for you? Well, liquidity is the main thing, lah. I see. Yeah, liquidity. It's, you're really you're fast in, you're fast out, right? Ah. And it's good because if you need cash, and it's like equities is like cash or cash equivalent, yes, essentially, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And you and and the markets are so so globalized now, um, and of course uh, the markets are also very efficient because it's so mature, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's quite an efficient price me- discovery mechanism, really. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. Mu- there are thereabouts are uh, what it's worth, right? Yes. Of course, you can move your market value can really move, right? Um, so it, it's good in that way, la. And the fact is, you can buy pretty much anything in the world. You can buy a Kazakhstan oil miner mm-hmm. if you want, right? Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. buy natural gas futures. You can buy Apple if you want. Mm. You can go and buy, and if you could buy, if you could buy. Um, I think Porsche's just listed. If you want to buy, if you want to, if you want to buy a car company, why must you buy DRB Highcom? You correct, buy correct. Porsche, right? Porsche or Ferrari. Or Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you can't buy Ferrari because I don't think they're listed, right? I think they are, but they may have been privatized. I have to, I have to double yeah. check. Yeah, yeah. But you can buy Volkswagen. Yeah. Not that you want to, right? Yeah, yeah. You can buy Tesla. Yeah. Which you should have. <laughs> yeah, but five years ago. <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> three stock splits ago. <laughs> yeah, three stock splits before the hype. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. No, I, I, and I, I love it that you mentioned about liquidity because um, I think most uh, investors who are just starting the game of investing, um, they may not have had the chance to try different, different asset classes. It's kind of like a journey mm-hmm. in a way. It is absolutely a journey. Yeah, it's a yeah. journey. And you know, um, your, your, your former colleague, uh, or your, your, your employer I would say, uh, Malik, you know, I remember him saying very vividly, he tried to encourage BFM staff to invest, but oh. he, he said he was an abject failure at it. Yeah. I, and I probably want to ask you, what, why do you think, I mean, this is obviously your opinion, not you know, paraphrasing what Malik said, but what do you think was the stumbling blocks? You know, Him trying to, he was doing, obviously he was trying to do the staff a favor, yeah. but there were a lot of roadblocks. You know? what, what do you think that, that was the Well, case? I should just clarify that I was never an, um, uh, an employee of BFM. Uh, I was always just a contractor. I, did, uh, I never wanted to join as an employee. Oh. I told myself in 2008 when I left Reuters uh, for the last time as a paid employee, uh, I'm not going to go back to uh, become a worker anymore. Okay. So I started my own business and actually BFM was just kind of like uh, it was a, it was a side gig, lah. It's a plat, yeah, yeah. It's a platform. Yeah. Platform, okay. Um, as to why people don't invest, I think first of all they don't have enough disposable cash, ah. right? Because you know Malaysia again, you know that middle income Medium trap, yeah. Oh, yeah. Currency also not not that strong. So you earn you earn say whatever after taxes after disposable after uh, your expenses. What have you got left over to invest? Yeah. Yes. 
The second thing is discipline. Ah. In order to be a successful investor, you need a lot of discipline. That's right. Completely agree. And the earlier you start, the more money you make, right? Yes. How many people learn the discipline until well into their thirties or late forties? Forties, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Some people they never start. Yeah. By the time maybe it's a bit advanced lah, you know. Yeah, yeah. You want to start at 12, 13 years old, like Buffett did, right? Yeah, but he yeah. had mentors in a way, lah. In a way, yeah. yeah in a yeah, way, yeah, 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 in a way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he was also that way inclined. So discipline is another thing. Hmm. Um, and then of course uh, knowledge, right? Hmm. You don't have the knowledge, and you're surrounded by all these guys who are like trying to sell you products. <laughs> Uh, unit trust, you know, I hate to say, it, but unit trust is yeah. not the best, right? <laughs> I, and then uh, I'm due to bring the. I was supposed to bring the CEO of uh, what's the organization for unit trust in Malaysia? Uh, there, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the association. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm like kind of hesitant, but in, yeah. anyway, leave it to another day. <laughs> yeah, you know, so a lot of you know, yeah. and BFM is an organization of young, reasonably young kids, lah. Yeah. You know, twenties yeah. to thirties. You yes. know, and. These are their party years, you know. Yeah, so yeah. for them to put aside, uh, maybe even a twentieth or a tenth of their salary at the every year, every yeah, month, yeah. to go and buy a stock, then assuming A, they have it, then what do, you, do they buy B? Yeah. And do they have time or even inclination to do the research? C, no. Yeah. So no, 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 no. right? So, so so many stumbling blocks already. Yeah. Yeah, so, got so. it. Yeah. So Malay was kind of like fighting a losing battle, uh, but his intentions are good, no doubt. But you know, <laughs> but on a worldwide basis, yeah. right? I mean, don't talk about the day traders at Robinhood, like in the US, yeah, right? Yeah. But generally, you know, investing is a quite a contrarian game. Yeah, you know? it is. Not many it is. people know. Yeah, and but, and it's also a, 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 a inbuilt nature, somewhat to be contrarian. It's not that easy yeah. to train. Yeah. So you got to you got to have the financial discipline. Yeah. You got to have the make enough money to have some money left aside or yeah. even to be disciplined to cut your costs and yeah. to have some set aside for investment. All right. And then you've got to do the research and learn about the shit, right? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? There's so many things, so Correct. many asset classes, right? Correct. Correct. And it's a lifelong process. Correct. Unless you love it, you're not going to go and dedicate your time yeah, exactly. and resources to it, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, and that's the problem yeah. because if they don't invest, they're in trouble because yeah. It's the real retirement conundrum, right? Inflation is going to eat into Inflation. so much. Yeah. You cannot rely on your salary. Yeah, it's not it's enough. It. Yes. I just came back from uh, Saigon mm. and um, my friend was bringing me around Ho Chi Minh. La. shouldn't call it Saigon, no. Ho Chi Minh. We pumped petrol for his motorcycle. It was five US dollars a litre. So yeah. I was like, yeah. He said he works yeah. in Malaysia and he was yeah. like telling me, you don't know how lucky you guys yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. Are you yeah. sure it's five dollars per liter? I, I think five. Yeah, it was no five ringgit. Sorry, five yeah. ringgit, five yeah, ringgit yeah. per liter. Be five dollars would be yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Twenty two ringgit is yeah. Uh, we paid two o five here. Yeah. It's ten but, times right. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. But so we heavily subsidized. Yeah, heavily subsidized. Mm. It plays into the dampening of the inflation, the real inflation that Malaysia is suffering too as well, right? So Malaysia is a bit of a la la land, right? Yeah. We are one of the most highly subsidized, highly assisted economies, or or rather countries in the world. Somebody from the World Bank pointed out about three months ago, right? Oh, okay. It's true. We've got subsidies on everything. <laughs> Cooking oil, rice, chicken, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. essential food items, yeah. you know, utilities, you know. We've got these, um, you know, the social policies that, you know, we've got all kinds of things, right? And and people look at headline CPI 3%. It's actually, for me, it's a, it's a, it's it's a artificial. Yeah, it's artificial. It's artificial, right? That's right. You've That's got right. the most number of public holidays in the world. <laughs> yeah. Among the most public holidays, yeah. right? Um, you've got all kinds of like bantuans every year, yes, right? yes, handouts, yes. right? And then for me, what irks me is uh, withdrawal from EPF. Mm. For but anyway, uh, let's leave politics aside. We <laughs> don't yeah. want to go into that. <laughs> okay, so um, you did a brief stint at Sifu. You know, I, I um, in my previous startup, um, mm. I actually did some work with them. Um, yeah. What was your aim? Okay, maybe you can you give me a brief you started Sifu was it collaborator was it co-founder and what was the aim of Sifu actually okay very interesting story because yeah. Sifu <laughs> <laughs> I think I shall give you the full story yeah, okay. for, no I would love to hear the full story so basically Sifu was um, was my idea right? okay um, and it was basically what I wanted to do was a, this is in the middle of COVID lockdown mm. right I wanted to do a social media platform for investors. Mm. So you know how you got Facebook and people go in there and share pictures. Correct. And it's like correct. It's general, right? Yes. My idea was to have you start a social media platform, and then you go in there only to talk about investments. Mm. So you got groups for, you know, whatever it's make a tag, Berkshire stocks, Malaysia curated lah in a way lah. Then you have your discussion. So you share your research, you share your graphs, you share your stories, 
And then what you do then is you will, you will create a funnel mm. into then into the trading and then to execute your trades, I right? I see. And then the idea is to team up with a, with a back end provider mm. which had those uh, products which you would then you know funnel yourself into and then make of course on the commission. And then of course your whole social media model as well, advertising and you know and, and all that lah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I I approached the owner of a basic basically there's only two trading platform providers in Malaysia. And okay? two N. Yeah, and, and XL, XL Force. Yeah. So I, I approached the owner of the latter. Yeah, right? yeah. And um, I called him at 10.30 in the morning. By 2 o'clock, I was in his office. Uh, By 2.30, I was shaking hands with his MD, who was in charge of XL Force. And ND, right? Uh, ah, yeah. yes. <laughs> and, and then uh, the paperwork was done. We got the set up. So fast. Very set up. And, and uh, within two months, the owner of XL Force had uh, ousted me. Yeah. Okay. He had okay. Uh, moved me up. I see. He, I, I think he wanted to do the whole thing himself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We should talk after the pot on this. <laughs> but my, yeah, but yeah. thanks for sharing. So your objective for that was kind of like a platform where it was a little bit more curated. It's still financial because what my anchor um, it, um, things is, is financial literacy. Mm. You know, we learn a lot of things in school, right? But we don't learn how to interact with other people. Yes. And we don't learn how to manage our own money. Correct. And be financially literate. Yeah. Those are big omissions, which I has see. not been addressed in the, fin- in the education system. Correct. Right? Correct. So the whole idea, the whole raison d'etre behind Sifu was to have financial literacy for the masses, mm. right? That was the idea. Mm. Okay. Um, but then, of course, uh, you know, when you're, again, captured and, and you know, you're driven out. Yeah. It was a blessing in disguise, lah. Mm. You know? mm. uh, if you want to talk about that, we can. Yeah, yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because uh, today, right? Let, let's talk a little bit more specific to Malaysia with regards to this. And I've been a lot of my um, investing. Let's let's put my lens on, right? For a while, a lot of my investing journey was when it started was two thousand and nine. Mm. A lot of it was YouTube was not big. Mm. Um, a lot of it was financial blocks, independent blocks. <clears throat> then came along i three. Mm, interesting. One right. of the best. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it, in terms of audience capture, mm. but there's a lot of rubbish in there as well, coupled yeah. together, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Sifu, I, I, I thought it would be kind of like a curated place rather than all the rubbish. You have some moderator, but there's always going to be a struggle because how do you moderate? Yeah. What are the rules? What are the guidelines that you put? That's one. The second question, maybe I want to solicit from you is this. You talk about it as a platform for financial literacy, but yeah. you and I know financial personal finance it in itself is already so wide yeah. stock investing is another wide yeah, field it's a subset right? Yeah. It's a subset, right? <clears throat> how would you be able to be so generalist and focused at the same time and would it be wise to actually or prudent to actually combine these two rather than having it separate because you've got the Wang Heroes Compare Heroes I Ringgit mm-hmm. Ringgit Plus that will in a way kind of like a funneling for yeah. products directly yeah, yeah. not so much education yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 What, what are your thought process on that actually? so the business model at that time <clears throat> this is a two years ago right two, mm. two and a bit years ago right it, it was very very dynamic mm. and very very minute by minute changes in mm. the landscape mm. and what I very quickly discovered even then was that there are competitors around the world mm. which were so heavily funded mm. so advanced there were competitors in China, mm. in the UK, mm. and they were already so big. So I, I really, I quickly really realized that if you don't have a crack management team, mm. a crack team of developers and programmers, a crack team of UI UX guys, Correct. marketing guys, right, funding from all over the place, and you know quality quality funding. Yeah, yeah. Funders who understand the model, who have Correct. The patience, and Correct. the, the inclination. Understand long term, play the long yeah, game. Right? Yeah. So you need. <coughs> so that's why the startup scene, uh, mm. to get a successful, um, um, a, a model, uh, mm. a startup, uh, mm. it has so many elements in play, and then you Completely must have agree. the landscape, right? Yes, yes. Malaysia, so. So just the plan and, and to, to just go through that thought process of how you get a good curated audience but at the same time appeal to everybody, that was one of the management conundrums. Mm. But unfortunately or fortunately, um, none of those elements were in place. I the see. talent gap was so difficult. I understand. The funder itself, well, you know. Mm, yeah, okay, let's leave it there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. um, the, 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 the technology guys cannot find. Mm. Like three headhunters working for us 
and they were charging 20% of first year's salary. And the CVs they gave me were horrible. Oh. Right? It was terrible. It was terrible. It was terrible. So that's why this also for, shapes my view on education. I see. Because what you learn in university and what you have in the, what the needs are in the industry are worlds apart, right? Mismatch of uh, skills and... Uh, and yeah, and yeah. What you pay, so that's again another discussion, right? I see. So, so then for me to build something to compete with the youths with the snowflakes of China yeah. and snowflake China is huge you know yeah. huge right don't even talk about snow- nerd wallet IPO already ah, right <laughs> yeah, in like little that. old Malaysia with a 32 million population right I mean it was basically trying to, to climb five Mount Everest okay? yeah, yeah exactly so you need you need a good developer you need good management you need co-founders you need funders you know and in you know so you basically need to find the needle in the haystack, which is a needle in the haystack, which yeah. is a needle in the haystack, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that I got out of that because it is so difficult. And for the, for the partner at the time to think he can do it himself. Well, good luck, man. Mm. Uh, I, I, mm. I know people who are, uh, in a way, uh, communities or platforms that kind of like compete with Sifu. Mm. And even then, uh, they have a crack management mm. team and everything. Mm. Um, I, know the, I, I know the guys running the Malaysian show mm. very well. And even then, right? the struggle to monetize will also be yeah. a problem. And because it's a long-term it's game. It's a very long game, cool. I'm, that's, why, that's why I'm very curious to ask you because when um, in the previous startup that I worked with and I, a majority owner of it, we actually did a paid promotion for mm. their platform. Yeah, I kind of liked it. Um, it did give an edge because uh, I, I know how valuable some of these data are. But there's only one pillar. Like why you say portfolio location, right? There's only one part of it, you know. Community building, content creation, curation, moderating, yep. matching products to consumer, yep. what were consumer willing to pay, what were they not willing to pay. Oh man, mm. I, I looked at it, I was like, oh my God. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a colossus, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a colossus. It's the, and then you don't even look at the governance and oversight as well. Correct. And then correct. the regulations surrounding that, what, what happens then? Yes. And I wanted to do crypto and, what oh. the, right? and that was another layer. Yes, right? yes, yes. So yes. just to get started on Malaysian equities, right? Then the feeds from Bursa, yes. who's going to pay, all yeah, these things. Yeah. It was just like, Wow. The feed mm. from Bursa alone is going to cost you 60k already. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, that's not even curated. You know, you have to scrape and then you have to curate again. Yeah. 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 So, so, so you, you really need the right ingredients to make the right, you know, food. La. If yeah. you don't have that, yeah. good luck. Good luck. Man. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you wanting to start a platform like that, um, let, let, let uh, Chuang and I know because we're very interested to support you if you have the right ingredients. <laughs> Because we also hope for something like that, right? Yeah, to be yeah, successful, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, thoughts on the Malaysian capital markets. And, you know, we did have a conversation over lunch. Obviously, we're gonna, not going to name names. Uh, we don't want to be sued. I'm too small of a channel to be sued, right? Um, minority shareholder interests. Do you think it has improved slightly over time? Um, in fact, I think we've overcorrected. Oh, we've got, we've become got, too conservative, is it? Yeah, we've got too many um, regulatory interests now in, in the Malaysian capital market space that is so encumbered, right? Ah. PLCs have got so many people working on governance and the you know, whole compliance that is taking too much time, too much resources. Mm. And there's a lot of box ticking, right? You Understood. look at the reporting framework, right? Yeah. Yeah, check, at the side, check, check. three different books, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sustainability report, yeah. uh, all these things. So, so certain banks have like three fat books and how much do they pay for that? Yeah, Nearly yeah. a million, you know, yeah. right? It's crazy. Who reads it? Yeah. Nobody reads it, right? I don't read the sustainability report, actually. <laughs> I do don't skim through start- a bit. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> don't get me started on ESG. Oh, okay? yeah, yeah. I, I'm in the okay. same boat as you. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm, I'm all... I, yeah. I, I'm very aligned to your... I, I, sorry, I think it's a yeah. little bit of a BS. Lah, but yeah. <laughs> So we've overcorrected. There's mm. too much compliance now, mm. right? Um, but at the same time, the Malaysian capital market, wh- where has it gone in the last 10 years? Where has... It's been captured by um, by too many lawyers, lah. Understood. Know? Not enough market makers, right? Mm. Where, where where were we when when Singapore was, you know, vying for you know um, the, the big grabs, IPOs? The yeah, grabs of this yeah, world we, or the lost, yeah sea capital. Well, what is Malaysia now? What, what is Malaysia known for, right? Maybe at one time oil and gas, but that 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 game, that the, ship has sailed. The right? sell, I think the biggest um, I can remember was probably correct me if I'm wrong. IH probably. Was yeah, pretty I mean, big. we had Farm Fresh last year, Farm and Fresh, yeah. here and there. But yeah. you know, then you had a few churns, listing, delisting, listing, delisting, delisting. Yes, so, yes. 
how many companies are we now? A thousand, under a thousand? Thousand lah. I mean, right? including all the three bots, probably about a thousand We've plus. We've about a thousand, give or take for a number of years, right? Yes, what yes. is the depth and breadth of the Malaysian market? Yes. Now they want to list Petronas. Why? Right? <laughs> for me, yeah. I don't see a reason why. No, right? Yeah. So, but I mean, not to say Singapore is doing much better because they also are struggling, right? Yes, yes. To fight with Hong Kong. Yes. Hong Kong itself, right? Maybe you could say that they're a bit of a cowboy game as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough, lah. You really need a crack team, even in, when Bosa and, and SC, right? I don't know about taking anything away from them, yeah, yeah. but really, it's 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 how you look at your capital market development, yeah. la, You know, it's it's actually interesting that you brought this up because um, uh, this uh, uh, I would say a, a prolific investor. His name is Rondi Yuanda. Um, yeah. He he actually kind of like invested into Stockbit the early days and brought it into Malaysia. And he and I, we, we have long and hard conversations about um, capital markets, both in Indonesia as native country and Malaysia. And you remember the time Chuang when uh, Bursa Malaysia was attracting Chinese companies to list here and that didn't end up really well, mm. right? He was sharing with me that Indonesia is kind of going through that phase right now. So there's always a, there's always a very fine line to tread in between Business development, attracting you know foreign companies to come and list, yeah. but at the same time being overzealous about regulation yeah. and all that. It's, it's, I don't think both of us, we have the answer, neither do the, the regulators, but I think what we hope for is kind of like a good balance in between. Uh. You, you will, say, will you say that? Yeah, yeah. you know, um, we, we, we've, we're losing a lot of, of potential listings to other markets, right? Mm, mm. Australia's uh, fast growth market, yes. Singapore's fast growth market. Yeah. Aims in the UK. Yes, you know? yes, um, yes. You know why? Why? Why are they going there? Right? Yeah. It's because the analysts are better there. Yeah. The fund managers are more better global. coverage. They know their stuff better. Right? Correct. So they're willing to fly to UK, US four times a year. Yeah, just to do. <laughs> right. And we're losing all this. That means we're losing not just not just the listing of the companies. We're losing ancillary income yeah. because you're paying advisors there. Of course. You're paying regulators of there. Course, yeah, of yeah. Of all course, this is right? yeah. Yeah, dual listings. I mean, why would you know? Uh, you know why? Why it would grab? You know, yeah. <laughs> want to list in Nasdaq versus yeah, yeah. <laughs> it should right, right? Yeah, homegrown. Mm. You know, but uh, what to do? What to do? Great. Um, your time at BFM gave you a chance to grill a lot of PLC founders, CEOs. What was the most interesting thing that struck you? I mean, you, like kind of like you went in prepared with these kind of questions. Mm. You did your research. And then you were kind of dumbfounded, either in a good way or a bad way. What were those experiences, actually? Um, what they say on air yeah. and what they say off air. It's very different. Uh, very different. <laughs> <laughs> you also discover that there's different levels of, of chieftain. chieftain you know? I see. Yeah. Okay, okay. And you'll be surprised at how prepared some of them were mm. and how unprepared some of them were how comfortable some of them were and how uncomfortable some of them were. Yeah. You really see a lot, especially in live broadcast, where you really get to see the, you know, when you when you talk to someone in, in person, you know, eye to eye, uh, yeah. and you have a look at what, you know, at, 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 at the, not just the, the, the substance of what they say, yeah. but body the language, you, say it, right? yeah. you, you pick up a lot of information, <laughs> yeah. something which Zoom takes away from you, right? Correct. You sit opposite the guy for 25 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what's what and what's not. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and I'm, because there are times when, um, okay, I, I wouldn't name this company, but I could probably give you hints and I'm pretty sure you know this company. La. Um, telco. <laughs> <laughs> and then you grill them. <laughs> and then every time you ask the question, right? Ah, answer this properly. <laughs> and then they came out the answer like, oh man, another fluff, right? Yeah. I think you you kind of get which company I'm talking yeah. about, right? Right. Yeah. And then you were asking him like, this was promise after quarter, after year, whatever year. And then they always come out with a new story. Yeah. And you kind of like have to control your emotions because sometimes you know it's fluff. So, do you train yourself to be like, be neutral, but at the same time, you got to like push harder for the answer, you know? Yeah. Is, is that a training that you guys develop? Okay, the reason why I started BFM in the first place, or rather, I, the reason why I started to do BFM in the first place was because I thought that um, after having left Reuters, working as a journalist for a number of years, I wanted to do something more meaningful. Mm. I wanted to do a job or, or I would pursue work which would give back to society, mm -hmm. right? So the underlying reason why I, I did BFM was so that I could help the minority investor, mm. the minority shareholder, mm. which to me had been screwed many, many times mm. in the last 20 years, right? Yeah, yeah. Retirees, pensioners, correct, lost their correct, savings, correct. You know, invested in the wrong company, right? 
read stories in the in the press which were disingenuous, yes. right? Advice, ill advice by advisors and all kinds mm. of things. Uh. Mm. So the reason I wanted to do this, so I wanted to grill PLCs and sh- and basically alert people to whether this is a good business or not a good business, mm. right? So that was my underlying um, raison d'etre, mm. right? Mm, 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 mm. So, so then in the process of interviewing someone mm. and in the process of that person answering in a substantive or non-substantive way, then people can pick up, mm. okay, this guy's for real or this mm. guy is not for real yeah and they can make their own informed decisions correct, correct. that was my goal I see yeah. I see yeah but the the process of asking questions at that level was pretty new or mm. was quite rare in yeah Malaysia. because in the U, in the US they're so common to, correct. to you know but in, yeah. in Asian cultures it's like wow why are you in my personal space you know that kind yeah. of thing right <laughs> So I used to get a lot of negative feedback. Oh, why were you so rude with the CEO? Yeah. How can you talk back? How can you talk to <laughs> yeah, the exactly. doctor like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that he's a minister. Yeah. I said, hello. Yeah. You should be thanking me for helping you discover. Up level. Yeah, right? Yeah. How can you, how can you score me <laughs> for questioning a minister for his or her behavior in, yeah. in parliament or the decisions he made or the yeah. statements he made? Correct, right? correct, correct. He is a public servant. Yeah, he, right? exactly. Right? He, exactly. A public CEO servant. <laughs> of a PLC is managing your money. You know? Yes, yes, if yes. If he screws up, it's you who lose your retirement savings. He uh, has the stewardship of the company, of absolutely. a public company. If not, remain private. Exactly. Don't become public. Exactly. The moment you become public, you are a steward of public's money already. It's accountability. Yes, right? yes. So yes. that was my, I saw my role as that. I see. As the, as the accountability person, as yeah. the Jiminy Cricket person. Yeah. Right? I didn't do it for money because definitely they haven't faced like shit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Malay, here they... I'm yeah? no, just kidding. Luckily, Malay. I wasn't an employee there, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I had my own business outside, yeah. but I, you know, I, I really wanted to work for the minority shareholder. Mm, 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 yeah. mm, mm, mm. I, I, I mean, I'm very aligned to what you said and I think that one way of you contributing was this. Um, the brickbats that gave the, those feedback, negative feedback to you, in, in a way, maybe your own benchmark, and I know it may, may not be accurate. Do you feel that more needs to be done to elevate them to think that, hey, it's not about being rude, but it's about finding the truth rather than yeah. you know, just being culturally, uh, politically sensitive or whatsoever. Do you, do you feel more needs to be done? Absolutely. There definitely has to, a maturing or to be a maturing of society. Mm. But then again, when you look at Malaysian society, right, um, we are one of the most... Um, power conscious societies in the world, right? Yeah. Hofstede's power distance ratio, yes, have you heard of that, right? Yes, yes. So the Norwegians and the Iceland, the Scandinavians, yeah, yeah. I have the lowest reading, Correct. right? Basically, there's, there's very little um, time given to the big bosses, correct, right? Correct, correct. So the ministers and the CEOs will take a bus to work and yeah. they'll cycle to work. Angela and that, Merkel right? takes the train to work. Exactly, right? And it's completely normal, right? Yeah. For them to not have a driver, yeah. have a PA, all these things, right? Yeah. In Malaysia, we are so... Um, we are so cognizant of the power distance ratio. Then that means, uh, we we think that we are so subordinate to the big ministers and the CEOs and all that, which is a cultural thing, lah. Yeah. Right. Because as Asians, right, uh, when you're a kid, you're told, oh, respect your elders, correct, don't question correct, authority, correct, correct. You know, don't speak until you're spoken to. And it's not just a cultural thing as Asians. There's also your own. Uh, um, 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 whether you're Chinese or Indian or, correct, or correct. Malay, Malay right? yeah, yeah. You're even then there's, there's another layer, right? Correct. Okay. Another nuance of the culture. In yeah. Malay, you say it's bad up, right? Yeah, yes, uh, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Uh, don't speak up against the elder. Don't question. So, yeah. so I would have, you know, for example, like when when the you know when Telenor bought into DG. Oh yes, yes, yes. And, and the first two or three CEOs that came in were from Norway. Yeah. Right. And they, they used to tell me, you know, at town halls, right? I they would ask their staff. So, so what's your feedback? Be honest with me. We have a real session, Very right? Very quiet. Everybody quiet. Yes. They're like, they don't say anything. Oh, everything's good, boss. Everything's good. But then behind their back, they're like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, the Scandinavians, they have no time for all this bullshit. Oh, shit. All this no, go- right? no gossip. Don't waste time for gossip. Yeah, just tell me. If you think yeah. I'm an idiot, tell me I'm an yeah. idiot and yeah. we'll, we'll fix it, right? Yeah, yeah. So they so, so Asians and so so basically that's the part of the reason lah, right? Huh. So there's some Malaysians are like, hey, how can you uh how can you be so rude to the minister or the chief minister? Hello. He works for you, you know. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, <laughs> they don't understand. Don't understand, right? <laughs> I have a joke to tell you, Chuang. <laughs> so uh, there's a if, if you queue at the airport, and then if you're rushing for your flight, right? There was a, I don't know how someone told me this joke. Right? I said, so a datuk came about. He want to cut queue, and then the stewardess said, oh, okay, there's a datuk. Let him pass." 
Then the, the guy tapped the datos back. No, no, excuse me, I'm a Tansri. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know where this is yeah, going, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then the guy said, excuse me, I'm a toon. <laughs> so, I, you know, so just to espouse what you just said, right? Yeah. It's this kind of mentality, yeah. you know, you know. And then the overlay, <laughs> right? The cultural, the demographics, and yeah. the religion as well. Yeah, yeah. Then you've also got the titular system. Yeah. You've got a, a Malaysian titular system. Yeah. And then you've got the British titular system, yes, right? Yeah. So even in the past, you, you've got your, your PGK, PKT, whatever. And then you've got <laughs> yeah, your Dato, yeah. the Dato Sri, then your Tan Sri, then yeah. your Tun, and then above that, and what, I don't know what else yeah. there is, right? Yeah. And then you've got the Sir, right? Yeah. You've got your... Your, your OBE, MBE from the British. Correct. So you could have a Sir, Pansri, Tato, Tun, and then you have like a whole bunch of alphabets in front of your name. Yeah. And then you got your cultural, yeah. you know, hierarchies. Then you got the religious hierarchies. Then you got parents who told you. So all that, you smush you it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you get people who say, hey, why are you so rude to the chief minister? Yeah. Hello, he works for you, friend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You pay taxes for him, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, gosh, you can go on and on about yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> What do you enjoy most about your work as a journalist? And in a way, what was probably a feedback that came out of nowhere that really made your day and you said, wow, shit, it was worth the time? Um, because the pursuit of, uh, of work, right? Mm. Um, it's, 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 against, it's again Maslow's law of hierarchies or, mm-hmm. or law of needs, right? Uh, at the end of the day, why, why do you do what you do? Mm. It's, it's, so if you're like a, a journalist kind of guy, right? which for a long time in my life I was like, mm. right? Then what is the calling? The calling is the truth, mm. right? And that's why they call the, the media the fourth estate in the mm. UK because Correct. you got your, your functioning democracy, you got your legislature, your judiciary, judiciary and, your and your executive. Yeah. And then you got the media that comes in as the fourth leg because yeah. otherwise your table is going to fall down. Correct, right? correct. The media are the ones who call out the perps, right? The perpetrators. So unless you don't, so, so then for me in the financial markets, mm. right? I would call out these are the good guys and they, I won't say you're the good guy, the bad guy. I would basically, in the line of questioning, yes. people will listen, oh, he's a good guy, he's a bad guy. Yeah, right? yes. This is what, so educated, this, educated opinion, in a way. So there's only three decisions you make after yeah. listening to the PLC, right? Yeah. Either you buy, or you sell, or, or you, you stay hold. away. <laughs> 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 yeah, or you stay, stay the fuck away, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 So I don't need to say, don't buy this company, I just talk to the guy and like, okay. is he real or is he not real? <laughs> and most of the, I would say most of the time, some of the time, you're like, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you know, you talk about the fourth, the fourth pillar, right? <laughs> I was just, I'm just, I'm just being very cognizant about going down this this road of. Would you want to take an educated guess from your sampling, right? Yeah. How many people within your circle, or outside your circle, understand the understand the three branches of government? <laughs> I shudder to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, the reason why I asked that was because when you see uh, uh, the way appointments are being made, when you see uh, the blurring of line between the judiciary, the executive, <laughs> and the legislation, right? you kind of like, what I learned in the... <laughs> I thought I'm not going to talk about politics. Yeah, yeah. I think we better, we better, we better stay away. <laughs> okay. But anyway, coming back to... Um, your work, your passion. I mean, now you, you own uh, a training, I would say training consulting company on IR, PR, and you train CEOs to kind of present their stories better. Um, yeah. So in your current work of uh, training, consulting uh, for uh, PR, uh, public relations, investor relations, a little bit of a controversial question, uh, but hope you can indulge. Can you literally train a CEO to fake it till he make it? Or not? Is it possible? Um, you can impart the principles. Whether okay. or not the person can execute is a different matter. Like. Okay. okay. But in principle, right? Okay. And, and this is the same reason why I, did, why I do media in the first place, right? Mm. Because uh, on the company side, f- for a very, very long time, there was a certain trepidation with, with using the media because uh, either they're afraid of or, or ignorant Say the or, wrong thing. Or, or be, be misquoted or, mm-hmm. or there's an evil agenda and all that, right? Mm-hmm. So in, in so doing, not many public listed companies would, would be pu- publicly transparent. They don't, they don't, they don't have the, the level of communications like a mature market like the New mm. York Stock Exchange have, right? Correct, correct. In the New York Stock Exchange, they're constantly on Bloomberg, CNBC, talking about correct. the business, right? In Malaysia, you don't see many PLCs in the media. So then that's one thing. 
So then if you can tell them you need to be publicly transparent and yes. accessible, you yeah. need to talk to the media, you need to talk to the public via the media mm. about the business and the outlook and all that thing, right? Yeah. Then 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 that's what it means to be a PLC. Yes. Right? Yes. But in so doing, you've also got to play by the principles of the game, mm. which is when you go out there, you don't go and talk up lah. Mm. Okay, you don't, you don't present fluff to them, yes, right? Yes, yes. You, pre- you present substantive, newsworthy, yes. right? details driven messaging, yes. which mm. will point towards value for either one of your key stakeholders, right? Yes, that's right. Whether it's your regulators or whether it's your shareholders or whether it's your employees or Correct. whether it's your community Correct. or the NGOs or whatever that might be impacted by your business mm. uh, decisions, you know, operations, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I, I talk to these guys. And y- yeah, you can fake it till you make it because it's a performance, right? Understood. And mm. time and time again, you've seen that brand equity, right? Ah. Valuations are superior when it's being led by people with with um, not just top top management at a technical level, right? Mm. But also um, publicly accessible by, by good spokespeople, mm. right? Time and time again, right? A, a good example I always point out is like James, James Gorman or Morgan Stanley. Oh, right? yes, yes, yes. He's fantastic, right? Andrew Whitty, or yeah. formerly of GSK, now yeah. with, I uh, can't remember, Novartis, I think. Uh, Novartis, yeah. Um, and he, he's a fantastic spokesperson. So these guys have got details, right? Mm. They've got information on the margins, on the on, on, on the operations. He's on the ball, I put it this yeah, way. He, the, the, you know, they've got data at their fingertips, right? Yeah, yeah. We, and they've got the ability to speak, yes. you know, in front of a camera, you know, uh, um, dynamically in a panel conference, yes. right? Uh, in a hard talk discussion with, you know, someone from BBC, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's what it takes to be a top spokesperson. Correct, correct. Because correct. that's why they pay the big bucks, right? Yeah, yeah. In Malaysia, they might be very technically proficient, but they're horrible in the public arena. Correct. So correct. then your valuations will suffer. Yes. And then if you don't do that, you don't do justice by your shareholders. Correct, right? correct, correct, yeah, correct, yeah. correct. Great. Yeah. So you've got to be a bit of a chameleon. Yeah, right? yeah. You've got to have come from a very solid accounting or technical or engineering base then to get you to that point. But then at that level, you don't work anymore. You don't let, you let yeah, your yeah, machais yeah. do. You cannot be operationally at, at doing the 10,000 feet work. You Correct. are paid to be at 50,000 feet. Correct. And yeah. at that level, you're in the panel discussions, yeah, yeah. you're on CNBC, yeah. you're talking to fund managers, you know, you're talking to you know, your customers all the time. You're always out there marketing the business. Correct. And the value that you deliver to the company is at a very high level already. Got it, got it. Yeah. Um, I bumped into Azal a few times here. He is a marquee he, spokesperson. Oh. <laughs> the first thing I said, I went up to him and said, Afzal, thank you so much for leading the company. I've been a happy shareholder. You know what's the first thing he said? He said, why did you buy a delinquent company like us? <laughs> 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 can, can you imagine? You know, that's, that's, that's master craft. You know? Honestly, I don't know where he learns this, but he's one of the guys because I've, I've interviewed him before. Yeah. Right? And he, he he's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he's sharp. Don't sharp, don't sharp, don't sharp, don't sharp, sharp, don't, sharp. don't take his wittiness for you know uh, 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 being a comedian. He's really on the ball, man. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so. yeah. yeah. Um, crisis management. Yeah. Do you think that Malaysian companies do it well? And do you think that they present a good, very good front? You know, I mean, um, let's forget about the GLC, sir. I mean. That's part politics, mm, but mm. do Malaysian public listed companies handle crisis management well? And if not, do you think they can improve and what areas? And if they do it well, what are the examples that they did it well before? Well, I think you know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and, and, and obviously, you know, things have got to change and fast, right? Mm-hmm. Because we, we're living through a, a, an era of great volatility mm. and I think it will get even more volatile as, as time goes by, right? Yeah, yeah. So the underlying characteristics of a person, not just a company, has mm. to be a adaptability, mm. resilience, and ability to bounce back from from you know downfalls, right? Yeah, yes. And you look at some of the big glove makers, right? In the in the last two years, correct? They were wow. hit really badly, yeah. right? Labor issues, labor love. issues. <laughs> yeah, right? The love Andy Hall, the Andy Hall effect, we call it. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So. So, I mean, we don't have the Hindenburg, as, you know, kind of research guys here, but yeah. there's enough, right? Yeah, it's enough. Especially if you're export-driven, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you have to prepare. Lah. Yeah. But the thing is, um, it's against the, it's the company owners have got to push it through. Mm. I mean, PLCs here generally either, you know, family-owned yes, you know, yes, or, yes. or GLC-driven. Yes. So, the GLCs are very good, right? They're very on the ball in terms of all these, um, you know, these, these levels of, of compliance, right? Yeah. But it's really the, the individual owners or yeah, the family driven in on the journey, I wouldn't say mm, uh, all of them, but most of them who are on the journey to institutionalize may mm. not have gotten there yet, like in a way. Yeah, like. and they're like, I don't need to. Why yeah. should I spend the money? Correct, correct. And correct. they kind of like lurch from disaster, disaster, disaster. Mm, mm, mm. 
you know, so I, I guess after you can't grow beyond a certain point because if you don't comply, then okay. you don't play by the by the rules. Yeah, you don't get your big insta shareholders and that. Correct, right? exactly, exactly. Yeah. You're not gonna get your black raw no. if you don't if you don't mature up. I put it this yeah. way, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. So um, something a little bit more uh, personal. Yeah. Uh, you've got two kids, am I correct? And um, I'm guessing it's been easy for you to educate them about finances and investing. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Um, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> For that statement to work, it has got to be a mutual reciprocity. Yes. As in, you tell them and then they absorb and then they do. Yeah. It's not always the case. Okay. <laughs> you can say, but whether they do is, is a totally different yeah. thing. So, again, I think what my wife and I try and do is to try and give them the set of circumstances and to present a persona yeah. which, which, which demonstrates there's a return from having this kind of ability, right? Mm. Yeah. So, so, so basically, so, so they can see if they do this, do they do this, do they do, do, they do this, there's an outcome there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's basically management of top line and management of bottom, bottom line. line. Bottom line, you know, is how much money you can make, right? Yeah, Which yeah. is then skills and education and, yeah. and discipline and hard work, right? Yeah. And then on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the top line is basically expenses management, right? Correct, correct. Which is basically um, how you're able to not you know, to, to delay gratification, yeah. Leave below to not your buy means. that shit, right? Yeah. And then when we do certain things, you you don't between between the the thirty dollar thing on the menu and the twenty dollar thing on the menu, <laughs> you go for the ten dollar thing. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> because my wife and I are from Penang, right? Oh, so chika, so, chika uh, chalin, right? <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who don't understand Hokkien. 10 cents must be big. The value of 10 cents that you're paying must be bigger than a Bullock Cut's uh, wheel, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the idea, yeah. so I mean, they are showing signs of doing that. Mm. Um, but again, it's, you know, lah, I mean, I, I didn't really get into any kind of financial discipline until I was in my 30s. I see. It's too late, too late, right? Too late. You have to do poverty simulation, Chuang. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, I was born into a middle class family, yeah. right? Um, I think if you're, there are benefits to being born disadvantaged yes. because because in dealing with life's obstacles, then the, you pick yourself up yeah. and then you build up and then that's what life is all about, right? The hunger is there. The hunger is there, right? So, yeah. yeah. So that's why I say uh, poverty simulation, uh, but I failed at it too. Uh, you know? So like the joke I have with my wife is, the father and the mother, we can have ice cream potong 10 cent, but the kids yeah. will have hagen dazs, huh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> cannot do that. Yeah, cannot, cannot do, do that, that, right? You, do that. Yeah. Yeah. you know, your benchmark is like, uh, you know, so one of, one of my nephews actually came over KL and then um, they said, oh, we want to go dive ice cream, you know, yeah. KLCC, man, right? Yeah. So, uh, daddy, hey, daddy, cut, swipe. <laughs> Slap the floor, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With your pa. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Now, uh, probably uh, last two questions. Um, first one is, if you were to uh, look at the landscape of probably corporate finance, business journalism today, what do you think uh, in your skill set, what do you think you could help contribute? And probably the, related to that is, what can we as retail investors um, step up because we talked about minority shareholder uh, protection. Mm. One side we are educating, mm. but on the other side, if they still fall down to hearsay, whatever, it's kind of mm. like, hey, it's also your fault, right? That you have to pick up, right? Yeah. So from your point of view, what is your wish that uh, corporate Malaysia business journalism can actually step up to? Well, maybe specific things that they can look at. Um, well, actually, it's the prioritization of values, right? Mm. Um, we live in a world now where the value system is a bit I would say it's a bit distorted. Okay. You know? um, and actually, we, 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 we can and should have a return to fundamentals. Like, if you really want to have a good outcome in terms of your retirement, mm. th then you want to, want, want to try and put aside as, money, as much money as possible mm. and to see it grow in as meaningfully a way as possible, right? Mm -mm. Which means that you shouldn't leave it to the experts, mm. right? You have to take accountability yourself. Yeah. Way, so I understand that people have to work, they've got, they've got no time, you know, they, they're time poor, right? And mm. they could be cash rich. Mm. So then they... To them, I'm always constantly a bit surprised at the fact that people, they outsource two of the most important things in their life. <laughs> they outsource their retirement yes. and they outsource the care of their children, yeah. which is something, yeah. you know, so yeah. I, yeah. So, so then these are two very fundamental pillars of your life, yeah. right? If you outsource your retirement to someone else, then that person's mistakes of, or wins you are you are you are basically equally liable vic uh. victim to them right yeah yeah so you better make sure you choose a very good money manager yeah. or you choose a good outsource provider 
who can really deliver your your retirement for you. Because if you don't, well, then you're screwed, right? Yes, yes, yes. And equally with your children, yeah. You know, you, you this this particular person could have been living in a village, you know, surrounded by chickens, chickens and a bonfire, yeah. Until three months ago, and yeah. then you put her in charge of your child, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure about that, right? In, yeah. in a jungle clearing in yeah. Indonesia, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So so basically you cannot rely on other people to sort your life out. Mm. You have to take accountability. Yeah. Go and do the reading. Go and do the reading. You, you may not discipline. need to be the expert, but at least you know the framework yeah. or something like that, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. even if you don't have the time to invest yourself, go and read about the industry so at least you know, yes, right? Yes. I want to buy these things. Yes. I want to buy this class. Yes. Uh, even research your money managers. There's money managers yeah. and then there's money managers, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So then, do the research yeah. and have an educated point of view. So then, when you do hire the money manager, which is the money manager, manager. you tell the money manager, "I want this, 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 this." Yes. And you give them a framework. Yeah. To follow, because yeah. the money manager will want that framework because yeah. the more clarity, the better. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, uh, last question um, for those of you who have followed Chuang, um, uh, he has actually a podcast channel called Do More. Um, what is your ultimate wish for Do More? And um, probably is there one guest that you want to bring who may listen to this that it's very hard to reach him or her that you, you, you want him or her to come? Okay, the overriding objective behind Do More is to ensure as much as possible <laughs> <you have> one <laughs> little voice right, yeah. for people to fulfill their full potential. Great. Okay? Um, and that's the overriding objective. Yeah. I've got certain principles with my podcast, right? I've got three pillars. Investments, okay. entrepreneurship, okay. and leadership, right? Okay. But I've got some certain principles in there. Mm. I only interview Asians. Ooh, oh, I didn't never, know that. Okay. No Westerners, right? No wow. Westerners, because I believe that it's Asia's uh, century. Okay. 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 And the second thing is I don't uh, talk about race or religion. Fantastic. Okay? Okay. Race, religion, politics. Yeah. Okay? Because um, for all those reasons, yeah, yeah. you need to say. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do I have a guess? So, so if you ask me. Uh. Would I have Bill Gates or Satya Nadella? Satya Nadella, why? Because he's Asian. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so based okay. on those principles, yeah. it's not yeah. to say Bill Gates is any dumb. No. It's just Bill Gates has been overdone. Yes. How well? I mean, Satya Nadella could be American Indian, but yeah. he's Indian, right? Yes, yes. So yes, right? Uh, Mukesh Ambani, yes. Yeah. Uh, but not, you know, um, I don't know, Bezos, right? Bezos, for example, yeah. Right? Yeah. Even this so, guy, so are, yeah. I, I, even this guy, I think is a little bit undercover. I only found him a few times. Uh, Ajit Banga. Yep. Yeah. Which B- is Berkshire's uh, co-MD. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no the, the, the Mastercard one. Oh, Ajit Banga, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Full turban. Yeah, yeah, full turban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, Sorry, I was thinking of Ajit Jain. Uh, Ajit Jain, which is uh, Berkshire, yeah, Berkshire's yeah. Uh, reinsurance uh, expert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, for those of you who somehow, somewhere may know some of these uh, prolific Asian guys, a little bit undercovered, you know, yeah. Chuang would be more than happy to interview them. <laughs> Chuang, probably... Um, your last wish for Malaysia, and I know we don't like to talk about politics, but maybe you choose to come back for a reason. Mm, mm. There's definitely some things that are going well for Malaysia and some things that are not. Mm. Um, in general, what would you wish for Malaysia and something we, even as a, we're not a Dato, we're not a Tan Sri, that we can do? What, what, what do you think? Okay. What, what are your hopes actually? For we are, make no mistake, yeah. uh, John, we are living in one of the most um, fortunate places in the world with the most, one of the rosiest outlooks for the next hundred years that we, that we even care to imagine, yeah. right? Um, a lot of people don't realize this and a lot of people still want to emigrate and all these things, right? I worked in the UK. Even 15 years ago, you know, I was working in the square mile, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is where all the banks are, right? Yeah. It's called bank. Even yeah. the tube station is called bank. <laughs> and bank is money, right? Yeah. You can feel that the city is crumbling. Mm. You can feel that the whole European subcontinent is crumbling. Yeah. Why? It's time and the sun is over. Mm. And if you follow the, Euro- the, the American economy now, you'd realize that the wow. level of indebtedness, yes. you know, this whole de-dollarization, the political system, the political system, just, yeah. you know, healthcare is, is in a shambles, right? Yes, yes. So the thing is, the, the West, the, it's time in, in the sun is about to end. It's on its way out. Yeah. And that's why we've got all this tension now, right? That's right. We in ASEAN and Asia, we are living in the next, in the next uh, boom era. It is going to be a boom that we've never ever seen before, yeah. the extent of which, right? Yeah. If you go anywhere around ASEAN, you go to visit those capitals, 
Bangkok is rocking. Wow. Ho Chi yeah. Minh is rocking. Correct, correct. Manila. Yeah. Even two years ago, they yeah. had 50 over all-time high records on the Philippine Stock Index, right? Yeah, the yeah. PSI. Right? To today, I mean, the amount of FDI going to... Oh, it's it, crazy. It's off the scale, right? Yeah, yeah. You go Indonesia. To Jak- <laughs> Jakarta is rocking. Yeah. And when it goes to... Um, in, when it goes to Kalimantan, the new capital, it's gonna be, it's gonna go off this, it's gonna yes. explode, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, KK is gonna explode. Yeah. Kuching is gonna explode, explode, right? Correct. The proximity to China, yeah. and the trade route, say that's just gonna be, and little old KL, right? Yeah. It's uh, it's also rocking. Yeah. You go in that the level of investment, the Correct. level of construction activity Correct. is off the scale, yeah. right? So, so we are living in a very enlightened, very opportunistic uh, time. And for all those people who feel, oh, we're so screwed, the system, uh, yeah, political dude, system is bad, dude. dude. Live outside, then you know. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. are, we are in already the early throes yeah. of this huge um, era of opportunity and and wealth and and enlightenment yeah. that we have to make the most of. Fantastic, fantastic, yeah. uh, winding yeah. down. Um, Chuang, um, I hope to see you in the next channel, uh, in should, the next John. video. Yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we had so much interesting chats before, and I'm, I'm very sure you're gonna have another interesting chat after. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, thanks for the time, man. Yeah. Um, too bad we don't see you grilling anyone anymore. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, hopefully, let us know when you're gonna grill someone <laughs> again. <laughs> Looking forward to that. And uh, for those listeners who love content like this, uh, do remember to give the content uh, a like. You know, subscribe to the channel. The YouTube algorithm will actually help spread to more like-minded investors like you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys. Bye-bye. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks.